Podcasting from the Chicagoland area, this is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. This is Dale Valor. This is Pamela Ross. This is Trinesia. And you're listening. And you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. To Game On with Jackson Stewart. Game On with Jackson Stewart. Killing them! Follow Game On with Jackson Stewart on YouTube at Game On with Jack, on the official blog www.gameonwithjack.blog and at the new store www.gameonwithjack.shop. Keep it sexy and game on. Good people, sexy people, welcome to another edition of uh, Game On with Jackson Stewart. I'm your host, and uh, as always, appreciate you guys taking a moment to tune in and uh, check out the show. As with the beginning of any show, I want to make sure I invite you guys to Game On With Jack on other platforms, which includes uh, YouTube at Game On With Jack, Patreon.com slash Game On With Jack, where you can get your very own uh, Game On with Jackson Stewart Players Guides, lots of good tips there to introductory uh, tier subscription levels. Catch me on the uh, Game On with Jack blog, posting to that regularly. Um, any, everything from unique information just for the blog to uh, great articles that are out there that I believe will help you guys, um, you know, level up your game. So check it out, subscribe to the blog. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, twitter.com slash game on with jack and uh last but not least players uh shop so that's a uh, game on with jack that shop just this uh this week two new ebooks going up for sale uh we're talking about stress and we're talking about um uh oh my god I just forgot <laughs> I just forgot the other one I think one is stress and one is um is it aging? Uh, how to age better, I think, might be the other one that's up there. But anyway, damn it, just go up there and, and, <laughs> and shop around, take a look. Also putting up some new uh, affiliate links for great products that I recommend. So uh, definitely check it out. All right. Um, tonight we've got one of my favorite types of shows to do, and that's the uh, Ask Jack series. And why is it one of my favorites? Because you guys ask me questions, you know, you guys are sending them in uh, via Twitter, uh, comments uh, on YouTube, you're emailing me, you're hitting me up on the blog. So this is my chance to uh, let you guys know that you are heard and that I really appreciate you guys interacting and I want to get you guys some great answers for your questions. So that's why I really enjoy doing this show. And, um, you know, uh, the questions asked here are not just unique to that person who sent them in. I guarantee you there are tons of others who have the same question or maybe never thought about it, but are like, you know, oh, wow, that, that's a great question. Never, uh, never asked myself before. So if you did not get a chance to submit a question, that's fine. No problem. Sit back. You know, pour yourself a drink and, uh, you'll enjoy the show. So let's hit it. Uh, first up, we got at Max Power says, uh, Hey, Jack, love the show. What's your morning routine like and how does this set you up for the day? Max Power, great question. Uh, first up, if you want some great morning routine tips, uh, go to YouTube and, and, uh, the Game Out with Jackson Stewart channel. There's a whole playlist on morning routines, so check that out. But um, my morning routine is, um, you know, I, I'm not a morning person, but I do get up early, and um, I drink my celery water, I drink a uh, green tea, um, meditate, might work out, 
uh, or put the workout later on in the day. Uh, as soon as I get that out the way or while I'm, you know, doing my, my early morning drinks, I write out my uh, to-do list. You know, I have a whole, like, to-do list planner. And then I also will write out my affirmations. So uh, I, I like to kick my day off with positive, strong uh, thinking and, and reading. You know, I'm trying to get back into reading in the morning. After that, yeah, I might hit a cup of uh, just black coffee, no creamer, no sugar, nothing in it. And then, um, you know, hit hit the day and do what I got to do. Uh, I typically try not to eat before 12, and then that puts me into my afternoon. So that's pretty much my morning routine. Um, get up early, you know, 5, 5.30, something like that. Even if I've been out the night before, I still, still make my ass get up. And um, I forgot, big glass of water first thing, then cellular water, then a green tea uh, mixture that I got from a health site, and um, then to-do list and affirmations, and I hit my day. And, you know, maybe I work out or something, or maybe I do some stretching somewhere in there. But um, Max Power, I feel like it sets me for the day because, you know, if you have a shitty morning, it, it's really hard to, like, to course correct your day when it's starting off on the wrong foot. So I feel like, you know, the the beverages I drink in the morning, like detoxify my body, get my metabolism going, get my energy levels up. And the to-do list keeps me from, one, it, it keeps me from spiraling out, like just doing a bunch of random shit that's not accomplishing anything I want. But it also, like, helps me dump some of the like the concerns or thoughts that like for example like oh I gotta go to the store, gotta go to the store, gotta go to the store, gotta go to the store. Well rather than have to try and remember that if I write it down <laughs> then it's like I free that space in my brain. So that routine helps me uh, get my body started, get get my mind started. You know, lots of negative thoughts can creep in my my mind like anybody's. Um but I find that if I fill it and focus with uh, more positive thoughts like affirmations, like reading, um, reading healthy books instead of sitting on it and getting the news. Like I'll watch things for five minutes. I get the weather. I find out if there's anything I need to worry about. Like really directly impacts me right now. Worry about um, if there's any way I can help the situation. And then in the weather and maybe sports. And that's it. I don't want to hear the same gloom and doom because that's what the news is there for. Because that sales. Um, it's not going to help me kick my day off and be productive for myself and for the people I care about. So that is a, that is my answer. I believe morning routines are extremely important. If you don't have a morning routine and you just like get up and, you know, <laughs> hit that snooze button and then get up later on and struggle through the day, you know, start, start with a couple small steps. Like, hey, every morning, every morning when I wake up, I'm not going to use the snooze button. Every morning when I wake up, I'm going to drink a glass of water. And then build yourself your own morning routine. And there's lots of morning routines out there. If you Google, you know, best morning routine for me, um, you'll find tons of answers. So, uh, Max, hope that helps out. Uh, if you don't have a morning routine, definitely get one like today or well, tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, Next up, uh, at the real philosopher writes, uh, "Hey Jack, how do you stay motivated and focused on your goals? Uh, I want to start my own business, and I feel like being being more motivated and focused will be a big benefit. Thanks, um, real philosopher. You are 100 percent right. Being focused and motivated are." two of the greatest traits I think any business person can call upon. Um, guys, guys, stop saying, um, <laughs> realize one that for some people, motivation and focus become, they come very easily and it's almost like effortlessly that they just super focused and, and super motivated. You might have to work at it more and that's okay. It doesn't mean it's any less of an achievement, but be patient with yourself. So anyway, how do I stay motivated? I write down my goals. I write down my, my why It's like, why am I doing this? Why am I, you know, why do I start this podcast? Why do I put
put the work on social media? Why do I, or it could be like, you know, why am I going to this birthday party? Why am I going to this dinner? Why am I going to go see these people or this person? So if you write down your whys, you can go back to your whys when you're having doubts. Okay. When you're like, oh, this is just not worth it or whatever. You can go back to your whys and get motivated again. I'm also a big fan of, um, you know, reading powerful, positive reinforcement. Uh, I have a long list of quotes that I go back to on a regular basis that keeps me focused, that keeps me motivated. Um, I try and at least read one to two books a month. Yes, I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, I read 30 books a day. I, I wish I could. I For me, that just doesn't, it, it's not feasible. It doesn't work. Uh, I try and read one to two positive books a month. Right now I'm reading... Uh, the Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. It's an older book. And I'm also reading a book by uh, Russell Brunson about, well, it's not really, well, it's a book about marketing, but it's not like necessarily a positive thinking book. Oh, I'm reading uh, Money by Tony Robbins. So I like to keep the the mental plates spinning. And I feel like it helps me stay motivated and uh, stay sharp. And as far as focused on goals, to do list, man. You know, I, I don't try and carry goals around in my head all day long. It's too easy to forget them, too easy to get distracted. So I put them on paper. I, I keep a digital how how to list. I'm sorry, a digital to do list, and I keep a written to do list. And that it's almost like I'm sharing the focus or the effort to focus. Like once I put it on paper, I feel a lot better about. I'm going to get something accomplished then trying to remember it all day. And then something pops up and I forget it, et cetera. So write down your whys for your motivation. Keep motivating things around you, motivating things like good books to read, um, good music, good quotes. Uh, also, I avoid things that demotivate me. So, you know, if you're starting a business or working on your business and and there's people even close people that you love that are just negative and they they take away your energy to do your business, just don't talk to them about the business or kind of put some space between you and them. So I avoid demotivators. And as far as focus on my goals, I'm all about the to-do list, written, digital, whatever, both. And um, I feel like that helps me focus. So uh, great question, Real Philosopher. Thanks a lot. Next up, Mighty Macho. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Mighty Macho writes, Game on with Jackson Stewart. What's your go to workout routine and how do you stay consistent? That is a great question because I know a lot of guys, um, it, you know, when it, when January hits, right, fellas out there like, oh man, this is the year I'm getting in shape. This year I'm going to run. This year I'm going to lift or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And. You know, what are we in May right now? Uh, <laughs> some of those January motivations and workout routines have kind of fallen by the wayside for some people. So how do you avoid that? First up, what is my go-to routine? Well, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I focus on strength. I used to be a gym rat, meaning I, I go to the gym you know, I had locker, change clothes, whatever, work out, have my routine, change clothes, take a shower there, whatever, come home. When the pandemic hit and gyms kind of shut down all over, I, I ordered, sometimes I can't talk, I ordered a giant ass set of kettlebells. And that became my workout routine. And it was really beneficial. So Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, kettlebell routines are strength training, body weight, Right now, doing a uh, doing a push up routine that's that's pretty intense, hit workouts, and then Tuesday and Wednesday is cardio, and it could be something as simple as walking, you know, getting in my ten thousand steps, uh, biking a little bit, and on the weekends, you know, I mix it up. I do Pilates, or I'll do uh, I'll do uh, martial arts or boxing or some. So I, I try and keep things changing because it's easy to get gym bored and once you get gym bored you know or gym bored with your routine it's hard to stay consistent because you hate it we've had a couple of fitness experts on the show and they say you got to do a uh, workout that you enjoy 
if you do a workout that you hate, you're not going to stick to it because you fucking hate it. So find a workout routine that you like and then change it up. Change it up every five to six weeks. I also try and give myself some rest days somewhere in there to let my body heal and recuperate. Also, my routine, I love pre-workout. I know it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody likes the the ants under the skin feeling. I love it. <laughs> so, and uh, especially on lift days, I have a protein shake ready for me as soon as I'm done lifting heavy. So whey protein, skim milk, some fruit, blend it up. It really helps with the recovery. And it's not just bullshit. I'm not getting paid by pre-workout or the protein people. It really has made a difference for me. So that's what I do to stay consistent. Like I said before, you got to mix it up. I change my workout routine like once every month and a half or two months. I might keep the same weights in there, but I mix up what I do. Like, for example, the kettlebell. So maybe for a month and a half, every three days, I'm sorry, every other day, I've got, you know, today I'm doing swings and around the world. And tomorrow, you know, or two days later, I'm doing uh, Turkish stand-ups or Turkish get-ups. And so then after a month of that, I may flip it over. And I'm like, all right, it's just straight swings, like 100 swings in, in 15 minutes, something like that. Change it up. If you get bored, maybe you need an accountability buddy. Those are great. You know, I like, um, when I was in the gym, I had people that were like my accountability buddies. Like we would motivate each other. And there were days that you're like, fuck, man, I don't feel like working out. I'll be like, come on, get down to the gym, see how you feel. And if you still feel like you don't want to do it, just take off. And nine times out of ten, once, once the person who was in the gym slump got there, they'd have a great workout. So... Those always help. And sometimes, well, all the time, uh, listen to your body. Because there's times when your body's telling you it's too tired to go work out. And I had a day just like that last week. just was too tired. <laughs> so I, I skipped a day of cardio. And I wanted to beat myself up a little bit. But letting your body heal is as much a part of your fitness routine as putting your body through exercise. Okay? So... My Max, I'm sorry, my Macho, I, I hope that helps out. Next question, at Gentleman Jax. Jackson Stewart, how do you stay sharp and confident in your personal life? Shit. <laughs> Who told you I, I, I was, but, but I appreciate that, Jax. Um, how do I stay sharp and confident? Uh, you know, I, I find that keeping my brain engaged helps me stay sharp and i i think it, i think it's engaged a lot by uh, i read a lot i try and have good conversations with people uh i am an avid learner like every time i interact with people even if it's somebody i see every day i feel like i can learn something from them or learn something new about them so that helps i feel like that keeps my brain sharp I wish I could tell you, I sit down and do like a dozen crossword puzzles a day or sud Sudoku. I don't do that. I do kind of like crossword puzzles, but I don't do them regularly. Um, I think just being curious about everything helps you stay sharp. I mean, like, really. And as far as confident in my professional life, mm, you know, I feel like it's the same answer for confidence in my personal life. You know, I know what I can do. I know what I can't do. I know my limits, even though I, I, I know I can push past them, and a lot of times I do. But, like, you know, I know I can't jump off a 30-story skyscraper, excuse me, and, and grow wings. I don't know, so that's a limit. And I think a lot of it helps with uh, who you hang out with, who you associate with. If you associate with people who are confident, and empowering and supportive and they're out there like you know blazing their own trail i think it's almost impossible to not 
inherit or absorb some of those traits, absorb some of that confidence and, and that sharp mindedness. So I hope that helps. Definitely look at your circle and keep your brain engaged. Also, to stay confident, make a list of all the things that you've done, that you've achieved. Put it on an index card, keep it in your wallet. Just put it in an email or a text message or a note on your phone. And, and on a regular basis, read that, that note. And that will remind you that you have a lot to be confident about because you have a lot of successes. A lot of little successes can build big confidence. I think a lot of people forget that and, and, almost diminish their achievements because they're worried about being seen as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, being seen as, uh, you know, boastful or bragging or, or what have you. But no, no, you, you achieve some shit, be proud of it and let that tell you that you can achieve other things and be confident. Drink of water. I mean, I hope that wasn't too loud for you guys. You, you over here swallowing a gallon of water. Um, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I love this username. At Big Daddy Kane, my man Jack, how do you maintain healthy relationships? <laughs> I don't I don't think a guy named Big Daddy Kane has problem problems with healthy relationships. But if you do, Big Daddy Kane. Uh, the key to maintaining healthy relationships, I feel, are uh mutual respect understanding, uh, seeking to understand more than you seek to be understood, learning about people with sincere and genuous, genuine interest, and patience, I feel, are, are important in, in healthy relationships. Boundaries are important. Communication is key. Like in a relationship cannot evolve and get better unless people communicate. And it's funny, I have a, a good friend and whenever we like, if she pisses me off and I'm very much, it, it, it's a bad trait, but I've got that part of me that's like, you piss me off fucking, I don't want to talk to you about it. I'm just going to like stew a little bit and, and, and be, be salty and then not, not bring it up. I know it's terrible. I'm trying to get better at it. But she wants to just, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Jack, you yawned on your own show. I'm so sorry about that, guys. But my friend likes to just hash it out. She's like, no. If, you know, if we're going to have a relationship, I piss you off. You got to tell me. You piss me off. I got to tell you. Like, we got to be able to communicate about it. And it gets a little awkward and it gets a little tense. But she's right. I mean, I think our, our friendship, our relationship uh, is strong because we do kind of openly talk. And I, I find that that's, that's really important. So I hope that helps, but I, I think respect is, is huge, man. You got to respect each other. Like you have to. Because without respect, like, like, what are you guys even doing? Like you can't. You can't be in somebody's life and, and, um, be positive and, and instrumental and, and, and have a, a real connection without respecting that person. And, you know, I feel like everything is based off of, of respect. You know, the admiration, uh, loving support all that's based off of like that you you respect each other so th that's big and uh that's key and i hope that that helped out um next question we've got i think we got time for maybe maybe one or two more questions um let's see tim ray 72 how do you stay up to date with the latest tech trends and integrate them into your life. Ooh, you know, that's a great question because shit, I swear you blink and technology is just like, like blown right past you. Um, I focus on 
my needs and how technology can get me there. So for example, you know, I don't know, it's doing uh doing a podcast. Let's say I need cover art for a podcast, whatever. Well, there are all there's this explosion of AI generated uh art yeah AI generated artwork and and do I have to master it? No, but I am interested in it, so I will research it to find out how how does it work in layman terms. I'm not trying to program the shit, but and then how can I apply it to what I do and or what I needed to do? And I find that if you find the hook for learning tech, it does not seem so difficult. Like it's like driving. When you first thought about driving and you saw the stuff that goes into it, it looked pretty damn complicated. But you wanted to go to the mall. You wanted to take that girl out. You wanted to get a job. And you'd, so you had you had the uh, perspective of the end justifies the means. So all right, I gotta learn how to drive. Fuck it, boom! I learn how to drive so I can go and take this girl out or whatever it was. So I, I find that that's helpful with tech. Um, little thing called Google, <laughs> you know. Like Google, I'm just going to stand on that AI kick. Google, uh, chat open GPT, what is it? And just read about it. And, you know, Google and so many other search engines do a great job of bringing down things such a small level that it's a lot easier to understand. And, um, and I think, you know, I'm not intimidated by technology. I don't want to think that technology is going to be, you know, Skynet or, or the end of the world, but I find a general curiosity and, and I research things. And you know, I, and you said, how do I integrate into my life? But based off need, but if I don't need a spe- specific type of tech, it's hard to remember how to use it. But that's like with anything, you know, if I taught you how to drive stick when you were 18 and now you're 55 and you never drove stick again, you forgot it probably because you didn't need it. So, yeah, I think practicing the tech that you need, uh, staying curious. There's so many tech magazines out there. There's so many tech pages now and news, newspapers. Just, just read it. Just kind of like once or twice a week, pick it up. You can set notifications about tech trends on Google and you get the stuff delivered right to you. And, um, you know, and, and you can kind of like check your shit out and, and get up to date. So that is, um, you know, <laughs> Jack's reading text messages during the show. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, you know, a lot of people get intimidated by tech and scared by tech and there, there's no reason to get scared by it. It's just, it's just a new, it's just another tool. Um, and I think it, that's, the need for it, the desire for it will help you conquer what seems to be kind of difficult and, and hard to understand. Um, you know, and, and here's a, one more question on the lines of tech that I'll take for the show. And don't worry if I did not get to your questions, guys, I will definitely do a follow up ask Jack. So don't worry about that. We'll get yours in there. But at the gadget guy writes, what are some of your favorite gadgets and tech accessories? that you can't live without. Ooh, definitely my, my phone, my, my smartphone or cell phone, whatever they call them now. I mean, I remember when they were just cell phones. Um, I have a Surface Pro uh, computer right, that, that, that thing's a workhorse. I love that thing. Uh, cloud technology, it's so nice to have all your stuff saved on a cloud and you can just access it from anywhere that you can get into the cloud. Um, I've got gaming roots, so, you know, my Xbox, my PlayStation, and yeah, I think that's pretty much, and like apps, like I love apps, but I love apps that I actually use. I just don't go around downloading every new hot, hot ass app because that's kind of a pain in the butt. I think that's kind of, kind of stupid because then, you, you know, you only have so much quota people, but that is, uh, yeah, that's the show. 
And uh, I appreciate you guys. I've got about maybe 10 questions I did not get in today, but I will get those in uh, on the next Ask Jack. I want to remind you guys to uh, sign up for the Game Out with Jackson Stewart email list and you get free 15 confidence commandments immediately. That's gameoutwithjack.aweb.page. Catch me on YouTube, Patreon, Twitter, all with the handle uh, Game Out with Jack. Check out the Game Out with Jack shop. That's where you can get your ebooks and um, other great products that make a player great. And as always, keep it sexy. Game up.